Hey, hey, welcome to Coffee and Devotions. It is Saturday morning, January 9th. This is where every day you and I, we get together, we get into God's Word, and we grow in our love for the Lord together. And this year, 2020, we'll make it through all the gospels. Nope, all the wisdom literature. We finished the gospels. Uh, That's right. It's a new year, isn't it? Ah, uh, yep. All right. So we'll make it through all the wisdom literature. So this morning, guess what we finish? Job. We finished the whole book of Job. Why don't we go ahead and have some coffee? We'll pray and we'll get into my favorite part of the book of Job. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this day and we thank you for your word. We pray now that you would bless us and care for us. We pray that you would let us lean into your words and see your great love for your people. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, here we go. Job chapter 37. At this, oh, I almost did it again, but there we go. So there we are. Now we are at the right screen. Real quick, if these videos are helpful to you, let's let Facebook and, and YouTube and etc. know these are helpful and their algorithms are just of the such that either you have to like it or you can put a comment down below that I love this or thank you something to let me know that this is a value to you and also let Facebook and YouTube know that it is as well all right you ready okay Job chapter 37 at this also my heart trembles and leaps from its place hear attentively the thunder of his voice and the rumbling that comes from his mouth he sends it forth under the whole heaven his lightning to the ends of the earth after it, a voice roars. He thunders with his majestic voice, and he does not restrain them when his voice is heard. God thunders marvelously with his voice. He does great things which, cannot, which we cannot comprehend. For he says to the snow, fall on the earth. Likewise, the gentle rain and to the heavy rain of his strength. You want to read 7 through 13? the hand of every man that all men may know his work the beasts go into dens and remain in their lairs. Layers, good job. From the chamber of the south comes the whirlwind and coal from the scattering wind of the north by the breath of God ice is given in the bowl Broad waters are frozen. Also, with um, um, moisture, so he saturates. Oh, that's a big word. That saturates. Good job. Clouds. He scatters his bright clouds, and they swirl about, being torn by his guidance. That. They may do whatever he commands them on the face of the whole earth. He causes it to come whether for correction or for his land or for mercy. All right. What do you think? What do you think Elihu is saying here? Well, first we should see: Is this still Elihu talking? Let's see who this. Is. Yeah. So this is still Elihu, and he's talking about. The clouds and the thunderstorms and the snow and so he, yeah. Who's he saying controls all that? God. Is he right? Yes. Yeah, he's absolutely right with that. Good. Listen to this, O Job. Stand still and consider the wondrous works of God. Do you know when God dispatches them and causes the light of His cloud to shine? Do you know how the clouds are balanced? those wondrous works of him who is perfect in knowledge? Why are your garments hot when he quiets the earth by the, the south wind? With him you have spread out the sky, strong as a cast metal mirror. Teach us what we should say to him, for we can prepare nothing because of the darkness. Should we be... Should, should, 
He be told that I wish to speak. Even now, men cannot look at the light when it is bright in the skies. When the wind has passed and cleared, cleared them, he comes from the north as golden spool, and with God is awesome majesty. As the Almighty, we cannot find him. He is excellent in power, in judgment, and abundant justice. He does not oppress; therefore, men fear him. He shows no partiality to any and who are wise and of heart. All right. So, is that all true? Is God majestic and above all? Yeah. Yeah. Is God is God the sovereign one of the universe? Yeah. So in all of this, Elihu says things that are pretty good about God, doesn't he? Yeah. Does he say good things about Job? Nope. Nope. All right. Now, now the Lord speaks. Okay, let's not play with that, okay? All right. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this who darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Now prepare yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? To what were its foundations fastened? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst forth and issued from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band, when I fixed my limit for it and set bars and doors, when I said, This far you may come, but no farther, and here you proud waves must stop. Whoa, who created the sea? Who told the sea where to stop? What's he telling Job? You know. Yeah, he's, no, he's asking questions, but Job doesn't know these things. Does God take Does God take care of all the big, huge things in the world? Yeah. Yeah. Here, well, let's go ahead and I'll let you read 12 through 15. Are you commanding the morning since your days began and caused the dawn to know its place? that it might take hold of the ends of the earth and the wicked be shaken out of it. It takes on all like clay under a seal and stands out like a garment. On the wicked, the light is with, with old, withheld and the up raised on a broken. All right. Have you entered the spring of the seas? Or have you walked in search of the depths? Have the gates of, the, of death been revealed to you? Or have you seen the doors of the shadow of death? Have you comprehended the breadth of the earth? Tell me if you know all of this. Right? Who, who made the sea? Who knows the entrance to the dead? Yeah, right? God, God's done all this. God knows all of this. Good. Uh, oh, Go ahead. You can read 19 through 21. There is, where? Where is the way to the dwelling of light and darkness? Where is, is its place that you may take it to its territory, that you may know the paths to its home? Do you... No, it because you were born then, or because the number of your days up is great. Yeah, right. Do you, did was Job born before the light? No. What did God do on the first day? He created the light. Yeah, he separated the light from the darkness, right? Was Job there? Yes. No. No, was Elihu there? No. Was Eliphaz there? Were, were any of his friends there? No. No. 
right? So, so he's saying, whoa, hold on, you don't know any of this stuff. Have you entered the treasury of snow, or have you seen the treasury of hail, which I have reserved for the time of trouble, for the day of battle and war? By what way is light diffused, or the east wind scattered over the earth? Hold on one second. So this cord, if you unplug that, the camera will stop working. So let's not touch this cord. Thank you. Uh, who has divided a channel for the overflowing water, or a path for the thunderbolt, to cause it to rain on a land where there is no one, a wilderness in which there is no man to satisfy the desolate waste, and cause to spring forth the grasses of tender grass, growth of tender grass? Has the rain a father, or who has begotten the drops of dew, from whose womb comes the ice and the frost of heaven, who gives it birth? The waters harden like stone, and the surface of the deep is frozen. Can you bind the cluster of the pellets? Yeah, that's a bunch of stars up in the sky. Good job. Or loose the belt of iron? Orion, good. All right. Can you bring out as Mazaroth? In its season, or can you guide the great bear with its cubs? Do you know the ordinance of heaven? Can you set their dominion over the earth? Their dominion over the earth, right? Who's the one who made the stars? God did. That's right. Can you lift up your voice to the clouds that an abundance of water may cover you? Can you send out lightnings that they may go? And say to you, here we are. Who has put wisdom in the mind? Or who has given understanding to the heart? Who can number the clouds by wisdom? Or who can pour out the bottles of heaven? When the dust hardens and clumps and the clogs cling together, can you hunt the prey for the lion? Or satisfy the appetite of the young lions? When they crouch in their dens and or lurk in their lairs to lie and wait, who provides food for the raven when its young ones cry to God and wonder about for lack of food? Who feeds the lions? God, 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 all over them. Yeah, so God, God handles all the great big things, right? Was he there when he separated the light from the darkness? Yes. Was he there when he set the stars in their place? Yes. Was he there when he made the ocean? Yes, yes. Yeah, God did all of this. But not just the big things. He even cares about the small things. Like the little stars. Just like Jesus says, right? We not we don't need to worry because he talks about the sparrows and God gives them their food. Good. All right. You want to read one through four there? Do you know the time when the wild mountains which bear young, or can you mark when the deer gives birth? Can you number the months that they fulfill, or do you know the time when they bear young? They bow down, they bring forth their young, they deliver their offspring, their young ones are healthy, they grow strong with gra grain. Grain? Grain. Okay. They depart and do not return to them. That's right. So he even cares for the mountain boat goats. God cares about the deer when they give birth. God cares about the young bear. God's the one who cares for even the animals. Now, we've been reading in your homeschool a whole bunch about the Greek gods, haven't we? Yeah. And do they have to have a god for all these little tiny things? Yeah. Yeah, all these crazy gods all over the place. But who's the one true living God who does all of this? God. God alone. That's God. right. That's right. The Lord does it. Yahweh himself. Who set the wild donkey free? Who loosed the, bo the bonds of the onager? Whose home I have made the wilderness and the barren land his dwelling? He scorns the tumult of the city. He does not heed the shouts of the driver. The range of the mountain is his pasture. He searches after every green thing. Will the wild ox be willing to serve you? Will he bed your, by your manger? Can you bind the wild ox? in the furrow with ropes, or will he plow the valleys behind you? 
Will you trust him because his strength is great, or will you leave your labor to him? Will you trust him to bring home your grain and gather it to your flesh threshing floor? The wings of the ostrich wave proudly, but her wings and pinions like the kindly storks. For she leaves her eggs on the ground and warms them in the dust. She forgets that a foot may crush them or that a wild beast may break them. She treats her young harshly as though they were not hers. Her labor is in vain without concern because God deprived her of wisdom and did not endow her with understanding. When she lifts herself on high, she scorns a horse and its rider. He made the ostrich, but is the ostrich wise? No. Right? So who's the one who gives wisdom? But isn't the, isn't the ostrich proud? Yes. Can it run fast like a horse? Yes. Is it smart like a horse? Yes. He says no. He says no. You want to read about the horses now in verse 19? Yeah. Right Have you given the horse strength that you are clothed his neck with thunder? Can you frighten him like a locust? His majestic snow strikes tail. He, he paws in the valley and rejoices in his strength. He gallops in the clash of all. He mocks at fear and is not frightened, nor does he turn back for the sword. The evil rattles against him, the glittering spear and javelin. He devours the distance with fierceness and rage not, nor does he come to a halt because the trumpet ha has sounded. At the blast of the trumpet says, Aha! He, he smells the battle from afar, the thunder of captains in shouting. Man, that's that's really sounding cool for the horse, huh? Yeah. yeah the horse loved to go in the battle. Right? He, he gallops and he goes into war and the quiver rattles at his side and he, he hears the captain and he... Right? He's ready for battle. Who made that stately and majestic and strong and awesome horse? God. God did. That's right. Does a hawk fly by your wisdom and spread its wings towards the south? Does the eagle mount up at your command or make its nest on high? On the rock it dwells and resides, on the crag of the rock and the stronghold. From there it spies out the prey and its, its eyes observe from afar. Its young ones suck up blood, and there are slain. And where the slain are, there it is. Have you seen some eagles lately? Yes, lots of eagles when you went on a trip. Yeah, and are they are they huge? Yeah, they're almost as big as a car window. Yeah, they're almost as big as a car window. Did Job make them? No. Who made them? God. God did. So he made these amazing, majestic creatures, the horse and the... And he made the eagle, yeah. right? That's God who made these amazing creatures. All right. Moreover, the Lord answered Job and said, Shall the one who contends with the Almighty correct him? Who shall rebuke God? Let him answer it. You go ahead and read what Job says to God. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Lord, I am vile. What shall I answer you? I lay my hand over my mouth once I have spoken, but I will not answer yes twice, but I will proceed no further. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Now prepare yourself like a man, and I will question you, and you shall answer me. Would you indeed annul my judgment? Would you condemn me that you may be justified? Have you an arm like God, or can you thunder with a voice like His? Then adorn yourself with majesty and splendor, and array yourself with glory and beauty. Disperse the rage of your wrath. Look on everyone who is proud and humble him. 
Look on everyone who is proud and bring him low. Tread down the wicked in their place. Hide them in the dust together. Bind their faces in hidden darkness. Then I will also confess to you and your own right hand can save you. Did Job get really close to impugning God? Mm -hmm. Yeah, was he, was he confessing the, the deep sorrow of his heart? Mm -hmm. And did he want to ask God and, and get answers from God? Yes. And now is God answering him? Yes. And, and is God answering him by, by telling him the full story? No, he's asking him a question. Asking him a question and he's going to answer it. You think Job's going to answer it? I will have to keep reading, huh? Yeah. All right. Okay, so we're going to read about the behemoth now. Now look at the behemoth which I made along with you. He eats grass like an ox. Now see his strength in his hips and the power in his stomach muscles. He moves his tail like a cedar and his sinews of his thighs are tightly knit. His bones are like beans of bronze, his ribs like bars of iron. He is the first of the ways of God. Only he who made him can bring near his sword. Surely the mountains yield food for him, and all the beasts of the field play there. He lies under the lotus tree in a covert of reeds and marsh. The lotus trees cover him with their shade, the willows by the brooks around him. Indeed, the river may rage, yet he is not disturbed. He is confident. That the Jordan gushes into his mouth, though he takes it in his eye, for one pierces his nose with a snare. Oh, you can read about Leviathan. Go ahead. Can you draw out Leviathan with a hook or snare his tongue with, with a line which you lower? Which you lower? Your, can you put a weed through his nose or piece his jaw? Pierce, pierce. Pierce his jaw with a hook. Will he make many supplications to you? Will he speak softly to you? Will he make a covenant with you? Will you take him as a servant forever? Will you play with him as a bond? With a bond? Or will you leash him for your maidens? Will your companions make a banquet of him? Will they apportion him among the merchants? Can you fill his skin with harpoons or his head with fishing spears? Lay your hand on him. Remember the battle. Never do it again. Indeed, any hope of overcoming him is false. Shall, not, shall one not be overwhelmed at the sight of him? No one is so fierce that he would dare stir him up. Who then is able to stand against me? Who has preceded me that I should pay him? Everything under heaven is mine. mine. Who made the Leviathan? My, me, God, 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 God. Who made the, uh, the behemoth? God. God did. So can anybody... What does he say here at the end? Everything under heaven is mine. Right, everything. So does he have the right to do with his things what he wants to do? Yeah. That's right. I will not conceal his limbs, his mighty power, or his graceful portions. Who can remove his outer coat? Who can approach him with a double bridle? Who can open the doors of his face with his terrible teeth all around? His rows of scales are his pride, shut up tightly as with a seal. One is so near another that no air can come between them. They are joined to one another. They stick together and cannot be parted. Their sneezings flash forth light. His eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. Out of his mouth go burning blasts. Sparks of fire shoot out. Smoke goes out of his nostrils as from a boiling pot and burning rushes. His breath kindles coals and, flaming, and a flame goes out of his mouth. Strength dwells in his neck and sorrow dances before him. The folds of his flesh are joined together. They are firm on him and cannot be moved. His heart is as hard as stone, even as hard as a lower millstone. When he raises himself up, the mighty are afraid. 
because of his crashings, they are beside themselves. Though the sword reaches him, it cannot avail, nor does spear, dart, or javelin. He regards iron as straw, and bronze as rotten wood. The arrow cannot make him flee. Slingstones cannot make stubble of him. Darts are regarded as straw. He laughs at the threat of, javelin, uh, ja of javelins. His undersides are like sharp potsherds. His, he spreads pointed marks in the mire. He makes the deep boil like a pot. He makes the sea like a pot of ointment. He leaves a shining weight behind him. One would think the deep had like white hair. On earth there is nothing like him, which is made without fear. He beholds every high thing. He is king over all the children of pride. Man. God made amazing creatures, didn't he? Yeah. Did he even make the mountain goat, though? Yeah. Does he care for when the mountain goat gives birth? Yeah. Does he know the light? Yep. Does he know the darkness? Yep. Did he set the stars? Yep. Did he, does he feed the lions? Yeah, I think that's going to be a yep, 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 yep. Do you think that he takes care of Job? Yep, yep, yep. Do you think he knows everything that's been going on? Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. That's right. Go ahead and read what Job says in 1 through 4. Then Job answers the Lord and said, I know that you can do everything and that no purpose of yours can be withheld withheld of you you asked who is the who is this who hides counsel without knowledge therefore i have uttered that what i did not understand things to Wonderful for me, which I did not know. Listen, please, and let me speak. You said I will question you and shall answer me. I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see you. Therefore, I abhor. abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. What did Job learn about God? Hmm. God is a God of providence. That's right. He's a God of providence. Did he think that maybe God wasn't in control of things? Hmm. It's possible at times he was getting close to that. But what does God show him here? Um, he's in this kind of of things. What do you think? Does that, does that give you any comfort? Yes. Why do you think that's helpful to you? Because I don't need to worry about things that happen to me. Yeah, we don't have to worry because is God going to care for us? Yes. Does God know everything that's happening? Yes. Even when bad things are happening? Yes. Even when sad things happen and we didn't, but it's not because of our sin? Yes. That's right. God is still in control. God is still provident. Right? This is amazing. God is so good to us. Mm -hmm. How wonderful is it that we don't need to worry that God is like the petty God of the Greeks and Romans, but he's a loving God. Yeah. So it was after the Lord had spoken these words to Job that the Lord said to Eliphaz the Temanite, My wrath is aroused against you and your two friends, for you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has. Interesting, isn't it? That God condemns his friends. Now therefore, take for yourselves seven bulls and seven rams, Go to my servant Job and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering, and my servant Job shall pray for you, for I will accept him, lest I deal with you according to your folly, because you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has. Again, isn't it interesting that Job 
Job knew God's sovereignty. Job knew God's majesty. But yet he still didn't understand it to the full extent. But they slandered Job. They slandered God against Job. And here now Job is again a type of Christ. Notice they have to bring their sacrifices to Job and Job will pray for them. Job becomes the intermediary. Job becomes the mediator between them and God, that God's wrath might not fall out upon them. So Eliphaz, the Temanite, and Bildad, the Shehite, and Zophar, the Naamathite, went and did as the Lord commanded them, for the Lord had accepted Job. And the Lord restored, Job, and the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had had before. Can you read this part, Nathan? Then all his brothers, all his sisters, and all those who had been his acquaintance before came to and ate food with him in his house, and they consoled him and comforted him for all the adversity that the Lord had brought upon him. Him, each one gave him a piece of silver and each a ring of gold. Now the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. And he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. And he called the name of the first Jemima, the name of the second Keziah, the name of the third, Karen Hapuch. In all the land were found no women so beautiful as the daughters of Job, and their father gave them an inheritance among their brothers. After this, Job lived 140 years and saw his children and his grandchildren for the four generations. So Job died old and full of days. Again, it's supposed that this event happening in Job's life is probably around the time of the patriarchs. We, you notice that his days are 140 years. This is similar to that of the patriarch. But we also notice here again the messianic trajectory, as Dr. C.J. Williams points out, that Jesus went, or that Job went from this highly exalted state to this humiliated state and now back up to a, a place of exaltation. Didn't that happen with Jesus? No. Yeah. Right? He where wasn't was even where higher was? Than, that's right. He went even higher though, didn't he? And Job went even higher. That's right. Where was Jesus at first, from uh, before all time? In, in the beginning, nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then once God made the heavens, where was Jesus? Uh, in the heavens. Because he's God, right? But what is? What did the Gospels in Philippians 2 teach us? Did Jesus stay in heaven? Yeah, he came down to earth. He came down to earth. He humbled himself. And did not just that, but when he came to earth, was he a king? Oh, he wasn't like born in a king of Palestine. He was born as a little baby in a manger. And then he was born in a manger. He wasn't born in a palace. You're right. But then how did his life end? Was it a good end? How did he die? Well, he kind of died um, painfully. Painfully on, on a the cross. Third day, that's when. That's right. On the third day, that's when it gets better, isn't it? Did things get better for Job? Yeah. Yeah, Job was exalted, but was Jesus exalted even more? Yeah. That's what we we mean by when we say a type of Christ. There are things in the Old Testament that show us, oh, this is like Jesus. And that's what Job is like. So for you, do you need to worry about what you'll eat or what you'll drink or what you'll wear? Do you need to be consumed with your grief? Or can you be comforted? That the sovereign God who feeds the lions and cares about the times when the mountain, bows, mountain goats give birth cares for you. That the God who set Orion and the Pleiades in its place also counts the hairs on your head.
that even though you might now on this earth face trial and tribulation and persecution and suffering, do you know that your God in heaven still reigns and that you can rest perfectly in him? I pray that's the case. Let's go ahead and pray today. You ready? Lord, we thank you so much that you are so great and that you have loved us with such an amazing love. We thank you so much for Jesus Christ. And we pray that we might trust in him and know your goodness towards us. In his name we pray. Amen. May the Lord bless you today and may he fill you with peace. I pray that you get to worship tomorrow and I'll see you tomorrow as we get into the Psalms. Bye. Can you say bye? Bye. Thank you.